are again, at the dawning of a new day. The seasons have turned, the heavens have wheeled over our heads, and so much life has been lived. We are not the same as we were when last the cosmos held us in its arms just so. We are taller, older, more wrinkled. We are weathered and seasoned and aged like fine wine. We have names and titles we did not have before. Our hearts have beat another 35 million times. Our ears have heard another thousand songs, and our eyes have cried tears as innumerable as the stars above. We have changed more and in more ways than we could possibly imagine, and yet, here we are again. Hello, I'm Will. It's a pleasure to meet you. You may have known one of the 10,000 me's that came before today, but today it is so wonderful to see you for the first time. To hear the first words that you speak, to watch your first steps, and to meet the you that you choose to be. The you that crawled out of the womb of your bed, left the warmth of what was before, swaddled yourself in cloth and stepped, blinking, into the sun. The ritual of being born anew each day. The morning does not mourn the people who slept, for they have joined the dreams with which they danced, and they are gone, but not forgotten. Their footsteps are not so easily erased. And when we lay our heads down tonight, we will join them. We have lived this spiral countless times, and we will live it countless more. We will watch the moon take its month-long breath, smell the autumn leaves, feed the spring saplings, turn within cycles, within cycles, within this cosmic dance of life. It is dizzying to even think about it. Days and weeks and years can blur together at times, whirring past our faces. The Earth orbits the sun because gravity arcs its path through space. We are always falling into tomorrow. Each day we stand at the edge of a cliff, and each time we step off, we are met with another precipice. There's an old adage that it takes 10,000 hours to become a master. 10,000 hours of building momentum, of stepping off edges before we trust ourselves to land on our feet. But there are not 10,000 hours in a year. We can never go to bed, the master of the year before. That 10,000 and first hour can only ever be tomorrow, and today can only ever become yesterday. We will always be standing in today at the edge of a cliff, staring off into the space that will become tomorrow, imagining what it may be, imagining what we may be. Life is lived at terminal velocity, a curious synchronicity. We tumble through it as fast as we can, free-falling past calendars and birthdays. We cannot slow down. We cannot cling to the ephemeral air around us. Life has no breaks. We can only ever lean into the curve, only ever build momentum. Imagine then how far we might fly if we only let go. I must confess, I have a fear of heights, but an ironic love of high places. My body locks up when I can see a drop below me, but I love to look down on a stage from the stage lights. On stairwells, I take wide corners so that I don't have to stand next to the edge, even when I am taking those steps three at a time. For some reason, I can only imagine falling, no matter how many times I have dreamt of flight. 
I think it's easy to think of all the ways that it could go wrong, to think of how painful the hard ground below us is. It's so much easier to sit trembling, to cling to the rail, to freeze on the step I'm on, than to let go and risk taking another. I think I have spent too much time falling, taken my steps too eagerly and plummeted too many times. I cannot simply let go again. I am reaching out my hand and praying for a railing. I think a lot of us are this way. We look down and see how far there is to fall, but not out to see how far we've flown or up to see how high we may yet climb. Humans have a habit of only ever looking where we've been. Because to turn around and face the edge means to face our fear of the unknown, to look and not see, to acknowledge that we may fall and not know where we will land. There is not a fear of the known. We tremble in uncertainty. Our hand shakes as we reach and we find ourselves stuck in place, terrified of falling into tomorrow, terrified of going around one more time, terrified that the stars and the moon and the sun overhead will not be the same ones that we left behind as if they ever could be. We clutch and we cling to our past, always checking the mirror to see behind us. Today is a day of trembling, a day of small steps and reaching for railings, but it does not have to be. We do not only tremble in fear. When we are abuzz with energy, when we yearn to see tomorrow come, when we cannot help but take that next step, that is when we tremble with excitement. When our souls are overflowing, that is when our body hums and we climb higher and build momentum. And for a moment, we can feel the earth falling through space at 66,000 miles an hour. And we cannot tell the difference between fear and excitement anymore. There is only the burning. As vast as a wildfire, as powerful as a rocket, it is the burning that makes the grass reach for the heavens. It is the burning that pushes the salmon upstream. It is the burning of our souls, the inescapable urge to step into tomorrow. It is no small coincidence, then, that the symbol of our faith is a flame. If anyone has ears to hear, let them listen. A church keeps a chalice, cleans it, fills it with oil, and lights its flame each week. The church gathers around the light of the flame, and it is not always the same person who keeps it. Rather, it is the work of the church. For the flame burns brighter if each cleans it and gives it oil and lights its flame than if only one were to keep the chalice. We are the church, the embodied keepers of the chalice, the symbol of our covenant, the fire of our commitment. The oil we bring is our lives, countless drops like countless days, holy, holy in our minds and our hearts. The chalice flame is today fed by all our yesterdays, a collective burning passion which we all maintain. And the light that it sheds is tomorrow. Almost blinding, it makes the shadows of our imaginations dance on the walls behind us as we imagine what tomorrow may bring. Our passions burn brighter when we share our lives, and a brighter flame means the shadows on that wall are clearer, so clear we can almost touch them, fumbling in the dark. We are reaching, but still we hesitate. We must make our hands railings. Let others clasp them in uncertainty and find steady comfort. 
Grip them as tightly as they grip us and let them know they will not fall. Hold them as they hold us and cherish each step we take together. They will offer their hand in turn and none will have to face that fear alone, the fear of how quickly today becomes yesterday. Together we can climb mountains. Together we can fly. Together we can build towers atop our conviction and let our burning passions launch us into those wheeling heavens. Together the world does not turn around us, we turn with it. And when we are here again, with another trembling hand reaching into the dark, we will offer our own, share the light of our flame, and greet them anew each day. Hello. <laughs> I'm Will, and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. <laughs>